Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today we are going to check out the VFO A229 Pro. All spec'd out, this is a 3-channel dash cam. But you can purchase the main unit only for a 1-channel front-facing camera or just 2 channels, the front and the rear-facing cameras. There is also the A229 Plus which is the 2K version of this. Also thank you Viofo for sending me this dash cam to be reviewed. And make sure you watch till the end because I'll do a quick video quality comparison of this dash cam to the Vantru Nexus 4 Pro, a Starvis 2 4K dash cam which I reviewed a while back and also the Rove R2 4K Pro which doesn't have a Starvis 2 sensor and we will see which one is better. The front facing camera records in 4K quality at 30 FPS and has the Starvis 2 sensor and it has a 140 degree diagonal field view. The rear facing camera records in 2K quality, 2560 by 1440 pixel resolution at 30 frames per second and has a 160 degree diagonal field of view. And the interior facing camera records in 1080p at 30 FPS and has a 150 degree field of view. As I have mentioned before, the Starvis 2 sensor is a game changer, especially in night recording where there is headlight or light glare. And this is now the one feature that you need to look for if you're shopping for dash cams. This VFO A229 Pro has smart voice control and notifications. Show all cameras. Show rear camera. Show front camera. To access the dash cam using the VFO app on your phone, it uses the faster 5 GHz Wi-Fi. It does have 24-7 parking monitoring if you want this setup. And this will need a hardware kit to use this feature. I personally don't use parking monitoring. Our dash cams only record when the car is in use, so I'm not going to be testing this feature. This dash cam has an updated quad mode GPS to be more precise. Now in this video though, it is going to be turned off for my privacy. This A229 Pro also has a bigger 2.4 inch screen. This dash cam records to a micro SD card up to a 512 gigabyte card. And just a note with dash cams, you will need high endurance cards or these VFO industrial rated ones so as to be able to tolerate the heat and also the frequent loop recordings of these dash cams. Inside the box, you will get this wiring diagram. We have the rear facing camera recording in 2K and with a Starvis 2 sensor. We have a USB-C port on the side to connect to the main unit. And we have the 3M mounting tape. And you can adjust the tilt of the camera. Then we have the interior camera and this one has 4 infrared LEDs. And we also have a USB-C port on the side and 3M mounting tape to mount this. And then we have the main dash cam itself. And I think this is bigger than their older models. And I'll do a comparison later. We have a 2.4 inch screen. We have controls here in the front, menu, record, protect, mic, and Wi-Fi. On one side, we have the micro SD card slot and the interior camera port. And on the other side, we have the rear camera port, which is USB-C and the reset hole. And this is the USB-C port to power up the camera. This is the mount and the GPS module. And you can slide this to the left to remove it from the main dash cam. We have the 4K camera lens and you can manually adjust the tilt. What else is inside the box? We have the two transparent mounting films. We have the user manual. On the bottom here, we have some extra 3M mounting tapes. The CPL or circular polarizing filter is included. And to install, look for the mark and align it to the mark on the camera lens and just push it in. It is friction fit. We have 6 meters or almost 20 feet of rear camera cable. We have the interior camera cable, a short USB-C cable, and we have the power cable around 11 feet, and USB Type-C plug and USB-A for the car charger, and we have two ports available. VFO also sent me their micro SD card. The kit doesn't come with it, and this is a separate purchase, and I'll be inserting it to the dash cam. Now let's just compare this to the older VFO A129 Pro, and the 229 Pro is definitely bigger. As you can see in the sides, bigger all the way around. Time to install this. For the main dash cam, I'll be using the transparent film. Peel off one side of the film and stick it to your clean windshield. Then peel off the other side of the film. Peel off the liner of the 3M mounting tape and stick it to the film. This actually holds the dash cam pretty good and when it's time to remove it, just peel off the film. 
You can remove the main dash cam from the mount by sliding it to the right. Now I'll be using my dongle adapter to power up this dash cam and I will link a video about this down below if you're not familiar with it. If you have a powered rear view mirror, this is a good investment to power up your dash cam. One less wiring to route and worry about. I'm going to use the short USB-C cable that was included and plug it into my dongle adapter. I'm going to hide the wiring and the headliner and plug in the other end to the USB-C port on the mount. It goes to the headliner and to my rear view mirror and the dash cam will automatically turn on when the car is started. Now stick the interior camera and you can adjust its tilt. Plug in the cable and route it to the main dash cam. Stick the rear facing camera in your back window. And probably the hardest part of setting this up is routing the rear camera cable. Starting from the main dash cam, route the cable in your headliner and in front of your A pillar to avoid the airbags. And on the bottom, across the A pillar and down the dashboard. And hide it in the trim of the doors going to the back. Then plug it into the rear camera. Slide back in the main dash cam unit, plug in the interior camera, and plug in the rear camera. Start the car and the dash cam should automatically turn on and start recording. Now you can change the settings using the buttons on the dash cam itself, but I'll be showing you the app. Open up the app and turn on Wi-Fi on the dash cam. Go to your Wi-Fi settings and click on the 5G VFO network. I already put in the password, so go back on the app and connect the camera. And it will show the live views. You can switch views, the front, inside, and then the rear facing camera. Gear icon for the settings, and I'll just show you the video resolution. And I've set it to 4K front, 2K rear, and 1080p. And these are the other settings. And I'll show you the bitrate, which I set to maximum. And these are the other settings that you can tweak and change. And I'll show you this has GPS, but I turned this off for this video. Just some additional info, if you bought the two channel kit, the video resolution options are only limited to 30 frames per second, even when set to 2K recording or even 1080p. Same thing if you only have the front facing camera, no 60 FPS option. Now let's check the video quality. So this is the video and audio quality of the Biofo A229 Pro. And the interior facing camera is recording in 1080p at 30 frames per second. And the front facing camera is recording in 4K at 30 FPS and also has the Star Vis 2 sensor. And the rear facing camera is recording in 2K quality at 30 frames per second and also has the Star Vis 2 sensor. And this is what the video quality looks like. And as you can see here, if we are able to see or read license plates of cars in front of us. So this is the video quality of the A29 Pro at night and the interior facing camera has uh, four LEDs but you can, you're not going to see it. It doesn't glow at all but I know that it's recording in uh, infrared night vision, black and white infrared night vision. And this is the front facing camera at night and this is with the Star Vis 2 sensor and as you can see. And this is what it looks like when you are close to the cars in front of you. No headlight reflection that can cause glare like other dash cams that doesn't have the Star Vis 2 sensor. Now the rear facing camera it records in 2K quality but also has a Star Vis 2 sensor. And this is what it looks like if someone is behind you and you will also be able to see the plates. Okay, for the comparison, initially I wasn't planning to do a comparison, but the first day of testing and I'm pretty sure our dark cloudy weather has something to do with it but I'm seeing motion blur on the VFO. So I decided to compare this to the Vantro Nexus 4 Pro and the Rove 4K Pro. And all of them, by the way, have CPL filters on. Rove's overall footage is grainier, but it has no issues of motion blur in overcast weather. And this VFO with the Starvis 2 sensor should have minimized this, but it is there. This is caused by low shutter speed. The Vantro has the better footage overall compared to the two. As tonight though, this is where the Starvis 2 shines and you'll be able to see the plates with the VFO. 
With the Rove, because it doesn't have the Starvis 2 sensor, you will have the headlight reflection glare. And the Vantru also has the Starvis 2 sensor, so you can also see the plates. Well, what do you think? Now, the motion blur should have not come up if it was sunny during my testing. And I'm not sure if Viofo can fix it via firmware. And also to note that I did update the firmware on this Viofo because they did release firmware updates after it was released. Overall, it is nice that the rear camera is in 2K resolution. I'm not really fond of its bigger size though compared to the older model. Video quality is good except for motion blur in overcast weather. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.